So thank you for joining our info session today on transforming your career with the GEM MBA. And we will be recording the session and making it available online afterwards. So if you have any questions at all during the presentation, we ask that you please put them in the chat and we'll get to them um, at the end during our, the Q&A portion of our webinar. So with that, I will walk you through our agenda for today. Uh, we will quickly introduce ourselves, um, but you'll get to know my, my colleagues and guests in a bit more as we get going throughout the, the presentation. Uh, we will share the MBA highlights and Career Center resources with you. Then um, we'll share an alumni success story and, um, and, and do a, a nice masterclass on how you can also transform your career through the MBA. And we will summarize all of this with how you can actually leverage all of these things with the GEM MBA. And then our favorite part of the webinar will be the Q&A and discussion at the, at the end. So again, please feel free to enter your questions in the chat and we'll do our best to, to get to them. Oh, excuse me. So with that, um, I'm Ginny Hinderscheidt and I'm the head of marketing for the MBA and DBA programs. Chandra? Great. So I'm Chandra Del Pont. I am the MBA program director, and I'm also alumni from the program from 2016. So I'm happy to have you join us. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Georgine Hilbert. I'm head of student services and career center. Very pleased to be with you today. And uh, in the end, uh, I'm Ipshita Das. Uh, I don't know uh, if you have already, uh, if we have already met during the alumni mixer. I am the MBA graduate of 2023, and uh, I'm currently working as a product manager in ST Microelectronics, Grenoble. Thank you. And now let's dive into our topic today. So with that, we'll ask Chandra, our MBA director, to just discuss the MBA highlights of the program. Oh, excuse me, I keep hitting the wrong button. Um, and then Virginie Hilbert will share with you our Career Center resources. Great. So obviously, you know, I just wanted to go very, very quickly because these are um, bits of detail that you can download um, from the website. But just to um, give you a brief overview, this is the MBA. We have a focus in strategic management and leadership through change. So that's the... Um, the style of the MBA, we're really focused on change um, that you can implement, be it uh, organizational, digital, sustainable, et cetera. But as an MBA, you should be a change maker. So it's almost saving the obvious, but, um, but that is the title of our program. So just to get into it a little bit, uh, we want to know, you know, why do you want to join this MBA? And I think we have a, a unique lens. It's a picture from our current intake, which was a beautiful, rich, um, mix of um, people from around the world who are joining us. Um, so this is obviously a top ranked um, MBA in the Financial Times and QS rankings. It's a place that is uh, quality controlled because we are triple ranked. So we have the, the prize triple crown that only 1% of schools have in the world, which is amazing. It's a, I would say, fast track program because you go through 10 months intensive face-to-face um, here in the Alps, so you have the beautiful mountains behind you, but the interesting thing is that the location that we're in happens to be an amazing mix of both innovation and sustainability. So there's a lot of R&D around us. Um, we are a tech center, Silicon Valley of France, um, but at the same time, because of where we're located, it attracts a lot of people who do care about the environment, who do care about sustainability and the future and durability when we talk about companies. Uh, so this has been integrated uh, and woven throughout the program, of course. It's a program um, that's very much hands-on, of course. This is something that you should expect from your MBA at this point. Uh, it's very experiential, uh, group discussions, case study, live business case, things like that. And um, it is personalizable because you do choose your track and your specialization. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and we do have exceptional study trips that I'll mention in a second as well. And I think that obviously, if you're going to do an MBA, it is for a career change, it is for a salary impact. So let's move on. So just these are the core courses that everyone in the program uh, is going to follow. So we have them grouped around four different um, uh, focuses. One is about leading change. So this is really uh, people-centric, organizational-centric, 
um, building collaborative teams, interactive teams, international teams. Second one is, of course, uh, one of our strong suits here at GEM, because we are, like I say, Silicon Valley of, of France, and we focus on technology and innovation. So, therefore, that is key uh, in the management uh, in this day and age. We talked about uh, analytics and new technology just a second ago with uh, Jenny before we started the recording. And then, of course, the basics that you would need for any MBA course, which is, of course, uh, finance and operations aspect. And at the end of that, uh, we also talk about uh, strategy, which is absolutely what you're going to need to manage all of these things. So um, understanding the different international aspects, either you know talking about geopolitics, um, global risks, or economic factors, um, of course, sustainability through strategy, and then putting everything into practice through the live business case, which is, um, which is our consultancy project, which we do over two months. So, and then we have our specializations, uh, of which there are three at the moment, um, focused one on basically marketing, if you're thinking about uh, lifestyle and marketing, um, being customer centric and developing your product around your customer. Um, analyzing their needs, and then putting something into place. Uh, second one is entrepreneurship. So this is the kind of a similar idea because you're really going to be developing a business model and a business plan, either around an entrepreneurial or an intrapreneurial uh, venture, and then how to finance that, how to pitch it um, internally or externally. And the last, I think, obviously, is uh, pretty fundamental these days very important talking about uh, business analytics, not from a hard skills um, standpoint, but really from the business standpoint of understanding AI analytics, um, value creation through technology, and should you or shouldn't you, and how to manage that. So this is uh, the program. We can move on to the next slide, which is uh, kind of a nice point about the program. Not only is it international in who the students are, it's very international in who the teachers are. We have teachers from around the world. This is not a French program with a French uh, set of uh, educators and professors, but actually a lot of practitioners from around the world, including the US, Lebanon, China, um, Brazil, uh, Canada, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, the Netherlands, um, Georgia, Georgia not being the state, but obviously the country, which is the example that we have down at the bottom on the right which leads us into the idea of international trips and international mixings. Uh, we have a full-time and a part-time program. The full-time program is based here in Grenoble uh, with some time spent either in Paris or you stand here in Grenoble for your specialization. We have a trip to Berlin uh, as well for a study trip focused around um, the tech sector value creation through transformative technologies, as well as the incorporation of our part-time students who are based in Georgia, which is, uh, I would say, to the northeast of Turkey, uh, to be more specific, uh, the country of Georgia, and this is Tbilisi, and the students come in who are basically at an EMBA level, and they come in and mix with you for your specialization. Uh, so that is a rich cohort um, where you get to mix with other students from uh, another country, very interesting level. Great. All right, thank you, Shonda. That was um, a lot to cover. And of course, we'll be doing more info sessions and there's a more in-depth uh, webinar as well on our website if you're looking to, to learn more about in detail about, about the program. So with that, we will um, hand the reins over to, our, to Virginie Hilbert. Sorry, excuse me, I'll make sure that we can see you. Um, who will uh, discuss with us about the GEM Career Center. So Virginie. Oh, um, hi everyone again. Um, so I'm the head of uh, student services at the Career Center and also a career advisor for our MBA students and our advanced master students. Uh, so what can you expect in terms of uh, career services uh, when you join our program? First, we have a very personalized approach. Every one of our students is unique, brings a unique background and has a, obviously uh, their own uh, professional objectives. So the first uh, thing we, 
we offer is personalized career coaching with one-to-one -one sessions uh, for tailored strategy. We also offer uh, exclusive workshops and trainings for our MBA uh, students uh, about how to strengthen their CV, LinkedIn profile. Uh, we train them on public speaking and executive presence uh, about career networking and personal branding, especially via LinkedIn, uh, just to name a few. Uh, our students also have access to a wide variety of workshops uh, we organize for all of our students. Last year, we organized 231 events and workshops uh, throughout the year, um, as an example. Um, we train our students on assessment centers, uh, like how to had to succeed uh, during the, um, the recruitment processes in consulting uh, and, and so on. And finally, we offer like personal development uh, counseling uh, on like process communication model inventory and debriefing. We also have tools uh, available to help you explore skills, strength and career paths. We have coaches that are uh, trained specifically on these tools and techniques. In terms of networking and corporate connections, uh, uh, obviously, we ha you have access, I mean, our students have access to our network of 47,000 alumni, uh, a unique opportunity to connect with people all over the world and in a variety of sectors and roles. Um, last year, our students had the opportunity to interact with more than 300 companies throughout the year through uh, job fairs, recruitment forums, guest speakers and networking events. In terms of like professional support and career support, uh, we uh, assist our students for their professional experience. In terms of search strategies, we have partnerships with more than 100 companies. We bring uh, exclusive opportunities to our students uh, available on our online uh, career center platform. And our students also have exclusive access to MBA job boards and industry specific resources like MBA Exchange and uh, the AMBA uh, website or AMBA network. All right. Well, thank you. And with that, um, that that was very quick, and there was a lot you so much to share. I think you did quite a few events this year, and I think uh, we'll get into this a little bit more during the discussion phase, um, and which I'm sure Chandra, our MBA director, will also and and uh, want to share some of those experiences. So with that, we'll introduce our star alumni here, who can, will share her experience. So I'll start. <laughs> yes, please. Okay. So uh, hello, everyone. So I am Ipshita Das. Um, uh, as uh, I already told uh, before, that uh, I joined uh, uh, Gem uh, in 2021, and after I finished my one year, uh, uh, I joined as, as uh, at ST Microelectronics Rusay, uh, which is in Exxon Provence, as an intern. Uh, prior to uh, coming to GEM, I had already having an experience of uh, um, uh, 13, like almost 13 plus years in procurement, uh, materials management, supply chain, uh, uh, in an uh, um, uh, iron and steel as well as automotive industry based in India. Uh, I came um, during the time of just uh, after COVID. So I wanted to take a career break as well as to renew myself uh, because uh, as we were progressing uh, in the uh, industry, so I understood uh, being an industrial engineer that I need to uh, uh, revamp myself and to uh, uh, learn more uh, strategical uh, uh, things because I had already acquired 13 plus years of experience and if I want to move uh, up in the upper management uh, side uh, with a more uh, global over overview of the company, I need to have that uh, uh, MBA as an added advantage uh, to have the more uh, macro vision instead of a, a, a micro uh, manager. So um, that's what I, I decided to uh, do my uh, MBA. Uh, I chose GEM and uh, uh, after I finished my MBA, I joined uh, in ST as an intern. Uh, 
and I, but just one point which I wanted to add that uh, we have all gone through uh, the process of uh, uh, finding internship uh, and uh, we always rely more on um, uh, our MBA degree. Uh, what I would suggest, what we I did personally was uh, uh, to listen to the alumni who got uh, jobs. Like for example, in my case, I had a, a interaction, a lot of interaction with Saloni Datta Gupta. Uh, she was uh, uh, a senior, and she gave me lots of tips and tricks to how to get some internship. Specifically, if you are doing uh, targeting some specific industries and some specific roles uh, based upon uh, your previous work experiences uh, because uh, one thing you have to uh, always keep in mind that your MBA is a uh, uh, it's like a golden star you know so you have to uh, take care of your uh, previous past experiences and take uh, the benefit of the MBA to leverage uh, the dream job which you want so uh, so you need to also specify more in the because we are working now in a different setup. We are working in France. We are working in EU. We come from a different uh, uh, country where the working procedures and cultures and uh, 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 industry standards are different. Uh, so it's always good to uh, acquire more knowledge, MBA plus doing some uh, certification courses, which are uh, uh, which can boost your uh, uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, which is uh, which is the also one of the step which I understood that you need to build up your LinkedIn profile uh, because most of the recruiters they go through your LinkedIn profile first uh, when they are doing the character uh, the uh, selection of the candidates uh, and uh, it is where you need to uh, uh, be more precise in the sense what uh, educations you have done, your experiences, the skills you have ac acquired, uh, your MBA, obviously what you are doing, uh, as well as uh, certifications. Uh, if you have some license certifications you have done, it's always an added advantage to your profile. Um, so anything else, Tini, if you want to that's, to that's really great. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. And I think we'll have more questions for you. And um, at the end of our talk, when we regroup all of this together. So thank yes. you that I think um, people find that quite inspiring. Yeah, thank you. All right, so our next talk is on planning the next step in your career. So we're pleased to Virginie will give us a little bit of a, a master class here and give us some tips that she also provides to her students. Yeah, so doing an MBA is an intense time of personal growth and academic development. Uh, it's a great career accelerator, as um, uh, Ipita just uh, uh, said, what well, care planning is critical to achieving uh, your career goals. So the first step, uh, uh, the first um, uh, reason why you're doing career planning is to clarify your career aspirations. Uh, it will really help you strengthen um, identify your strengths, interests, and values, and understand how these can be leveraged in your career path. Uh, second reason uh, is that it helps you set realistic goals and that align with your career aspirations. By doing so, you can create a roadmap that will guide your career decisions and actions. Care planning will also help you identify obstacles and opportunities that can impact your career goals. You will then be able to develop strategies to overcome these obstacles and capitalize on the opportunities. Care planning uh, will help you enhance your employability by identifying the skills, knowledge, and experience you need to achieve your career objective. Finally, career planning will help you achieve job satisfaction by ensuring that your career goal is aligned with your personal values and interests, leading to a sense of fulfillment and purpose. The career services team um, is here to help uh, the students at each step of their career planning through coaching and counseling. It is important to find the right balance between a sense of direction and open-minded flexibility. You might end up in your dream job after the MBA, or you might end up making a radical career switch. One of the key skills to master for any MBA uh, program is time management. You should learn how to plan your time and use it effectively. 
I recommend dedicating regular time slots to make uh, progress toward your career objective. This will make a significant difference. Your career plan will serve as a guideline for you throughout your program. At GEM, the career, the career services team admits the students on a regular basis and reminds them of the key steps they need to take and when to help them make progress toward their objective. We're here to help throughout the way and at every step. So these are some of the soft skills uh, that are most in demand for leadership roles. During your MBA, you should work toward acquiring and strengthening their skills. All right, great. Thank you. And just to stress that last one, that is one that we're hearing more and more from employers that they are that they really need those soft skills from our graduates. So we're, you know, I think it's the, your services and these trainings um, are really important when, when following a degree and to take advantage of these opportunities. All right. So now we'll open this up to leveraging the GEM MBA to now transform your career. So it's Chandra. Oh, you're muted. It'd be easier if I unmute myself, right? <laughs> so um, a unique uh, position that I have is that I'm an alumni from the program. And so I did have the experience of going through the process. And just like Ipshita, I think um, maybe we can agree also on some of the things to, to do because an MBA doesn't start the day that you start your MBA, but actually beforehand. And some of the things that you should be working on currently if you're considering your MBA is three questions and three actions. This is my recommendation. So the three actions begin with the questions. The first action is to ask yourself really um, about your values. You really want to think about what do you love about what you currently do or what you want to do? And what would you do if you could? What do you enjoy about the job that you currently do? Um, and where do you want to go deeper? And what are some things that you maybe want to cut out? The second thing that you want to ask about is um, what type of role, what type of job would be um, would be connected with, for example, your values. You know, what do you feel is important to you? I know this is a big question these days, is really about, you know, is it sustainability? Is it, do you have an ethical approach? Do you believe, uh, is it something about just innovation, um, pure innovation, or is it people focused? Um, do you want to solve problems or do you just, are you interested in strategy, et cetera? Um, and then, I think you also need to think about uh, which company, you know, which industry, which sector, um, where do they have a hub around that industry um, so that you can focus your energy on going to where that, um, where that hub is, where that um, energy and the synergy is. So you need to, to think about that as well. So what would be an activator for your career? What would be a catalyst to to help launch into. You want to put yourself in the right place with the right people at the right time, I would say. Um, so the next thing that you should do is start reaching out. So once you have an idea of what you want to do and where you want to go, start to look at the schools and then start to contact the alumni from those schools. Um, perhaps you're in contact with someone uh, at a second degree through LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, or you can ask the school to put you in touch with alumni. They'd be happy to do that like we do. Um, contact some companies um, that you might be interested in talking to if you're able to get their ear or get their advice on, um, you know, what key skills are they looking for? If you're really interested in a specific company, uh, feel free to reach out to them and say, look, I'd really like to meet with someone. This is what I'm interested in doing and, um, and see how, you know, maybe open they are to discussing things with you. Talk to program directors like myself, uh, talk to current students. These are things that you should absolutely do to talk about, you know, how satisfied are people at the moment with, with what they're learning? Is it impactful? Um, is it engaging, et cetera? And this is a huge investment that you're making, so you need to think about that. And the third thing that you definitely should do is um, you need to start preparing. Um, so not just research, but you also need to start working on your CV. You not, need to start making sure that your LinkedIn is up to date that you can uh, pitch yourself either in your essay uh, to the school or just in general um, so that you can listen to yourself. Does your storytelling make sense, uh, which is very important. Think about your budget. How are you going to finance this? Um, and absolutely visit the school. If you have an opportunity, visit the school, meet, talk to people in the hallways, et cetera. Uh, so that would be my 
first before starting. Now, what do you do during? There's a lot of good advice there, Shonda. Thank you. I don't know. Maybe maybe Eve Shita, do you have uh, something to say after that? Uh, no, no. Uh, whatever you said, it was uh, uh, perfectly clear because uh, uh, for me personally, it was like uh, I was in the uh, uh, phase of my uh, career where I was thinking that, OK, I need a boost uh, and uh, uh, I have uh, the knowledge, but uh, how can I, uh, you know, uh, take it to the next level? Uh, how can I upgrade myself? Uh, how, which MBA to take, where to do. Uh, obviously, my budget was also a, a point of concern. Uh, so uh, we looked through all these points, you know, and uh, uh, we looked through the, because uh, GEM MBA, it's a very good MBA, it's triple accredited and uh, uh, with a very good ranking. Uh, I think uh, before that, uh, because I was just searching at the time. I didn't know that much because I was looking uh, to uh, a school outside of India, uh, not having that much of knowledge, obviously. But uh, since I came here, I joined uh, uh, everywhere when I said, uh, OK, I'm studying in GEM. Everybody knew uh, already about the school uh, in ST. Everybody knows about GEM. So uh, it's a very big company. It's a multinational company. Uh, so it's a very, a very nice program, very nice school. Cool. Uh, the uh, program uh, director Chandra, she's also very nice, very helpful. <laughs> Virginie, especially um, uh, kudos, kudos to Virginie because uh, for me getting the the internship. Uh, I think uh, Virginie, she helped a lot. Uh, I reached out to her. Uh, we were having some difficulties. Uh, uh, she spoke to the HR uh, and uh, uh, she made them uh, understand, you know, to get me uh, <laughs> taken as an intern, you know. So uh, she was also a, a big factor uh, in the sense uh, uh, because there were many things related to our uh, um, visa and stuff, which is uh, more uh, the career center people, uh, they know uh, how to, uh, uh, because we are new to the uh, country. So uh, Virginie and team, uh, they always try to help us out in uh, uh, every information uh, or anything related to how to plan the career, uh, with the, how to reach out to uh, uh, recruiters. So it was a very good uh, help in uh, all in all. But the only thing is you have to be clear. Uh, what you want to do. So uh, uh, what you want to um, uh, take out from the MBA, it's upon you. Uh, it's uh, because MBA is uh, uh, for people who are already having some work experience. So you need to plan that what you want in, a, in your uh, next uh, part of your uh, career phase and uh, how to leverage your MBA to get uh, to achieve that point. Absolutely. So, exactly. That's absolutely Excellent. True. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to the next section, which is supposed to be during, although I during. think the advice the two of you just gave are more like lifelong advice rather yeah. than before. So absolutely. Angry. Yeah, absolutely. No, so never yeah. you can keep that one printed, you know, paste it on your wall in your refrigerator and think about it every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I mean, during, uh, you know, obviously this is a, an intensive program. If she, I think you agree that, you know, it's like a, a one year program. So 10 months of super intensive um, classes and sometimes you get lost in just focusing on your classes. So I would say that what's important is that when you um, have engaged in the beginning, you need to start out number one by listening to Virginie. <laughs> I would say that's that's number one. Engage with career services and really listen to what they say. They put a planning in front of you. They provide lots of opportunities and just you know never um, never or I would say always take advantage of um, opportunities because not just for networking, but any career opportunities, you may think, but this isn't related necessarily, but actually people have found so many connections by, I happened to be at this thing that was not really related to me and I met somebody else or they mentioned something else. And so they, they end up finding some amazing, uh, connections and solutions. And it's a, a little bit serendipitous, I would say. So that's, yes, uh, that's uh, just one point to add on this, you know, yeah. uh, sometimes you you have to be at the right place at the right time and uh, to connect with the right people, you know, sometimes. And that's what we call the luck factor also. Uh, so uh, you have to always, uh, uh, you never know uh, how you are going to. And uh, just to add on this point, that's how I got my current CDE also. 
because I was which an means intern. temporary contract. I mean, per permanent contract, by the yes, way. Yes, uh, yes, <laughs> which is permanent <laughs> permanent contract in my company. I joined as an intern. I was in a different uh, department, uh, but they did not had the plan to uh, get uh, get a permanent role for that. It was always supposed to be a intern position. And uh, I started networking with other people within the company. Uh, we were uh, at a lunch with some of the colleagues which we, uh, with whom we were working. And just uh, randomly, we, I was talking about, you know, uh, OK, I was, I'm looking for, the, for, uh, for getting a permanent role. And they said, oh, OK, uh, we, uh, we have a colleague who is retiring. Why don't you uh, uh, <laughs> apply for the post? So you never know whom, uh, how you are going to be, you know, like uh, you meet a person and there is a role which is uh, which they are uh, looking for or uh, somebody they know that uh, they are looking for a, a role uh, where they can recommend so it's always your know, networking is a very good place uh, and you should never stop doing it uh, uh, not to wait for the last last moment of your time you should always start net networking with people uh, also because uh, once they get to know you more, they would be more open to also uh, to recommend you because uh, recommendation is also a uh, what you say um, for the person who is recommending. They need to know you also to recommend you. So yeah, uh, yes, yeah, you can't just come over and say, "Hey, I want a job," and the person says, "Sure, no problem." The worst uh, thing to do is to reach out to somebody on LinkedIn and say, "Hi, I'm looking for a job," or to to post, uh, "Does anybody know of a job I can get?" Um, I mean, it, it's incredibly vague. This is not networking and this is not how you search for a job. So it happens to be the same thing. You know, during your MBA, you build relationships and you build confidence and people see that you're interesting and that you have interest in whatever they're doing. And that's how it, it's built. Absolutely. So, um, so in addition to that, I would just say that, you know, you need to participate. And that means participating to, um, you know, whatever the activity is, if there is an alumni mixer, for example, you never know. You may be tired. Put on your dancing shoes and just go. That's all I can say. Just go because you never know who you're going to run into that night. Don't be scared to, you know, just say hi to the person next to you. Uh, you just never know. So absolutely actively participate in everything. That includes obviously the business cases where we work with companies or the visits. Um, it, you know, speak with your professor, etc. Make sure that you're fully engaged and um, be curious, of course, absolutely. Um, you never know what you might be interested in because a lot of the modules will be very new to you. You know, you may be an expert in one area, but the MBA really provides such a wide range of subjects to stimulate you and you will have new subjects every week. So we do more of a block teaching style now. And each week you will be inspired and you will have things that, you know, kind of um, knock you a little bit off of your pedestal because it'll be, uh, it'll be very, very new and just dive in deep. And that's what I would say. And, great. and I'd like to add that our colleagues are experts in their fields. We have a, I mean, a plethora of subject matter experts, profs, uh, research experts, um, and they have they love helping engage students. So if you're there asking questions and you know what you want, um, don't hesitate. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and, and consider that working in a team during your program also is all about also leadership and collaboration and learning how to work in intercultural environments. Um, you know, our, our intake is absolutely international from all different continents and so it it does push you because you know the cultural thing but we definitely start off that's the first class we do normally is uh, about culture it's about collaboration it's about empowering you know new managers to create and to foster collaboration and so that's where we start because we know that the rest of the next 10 months is, a be, is going to be about that and so you know dive in and participate and Critical thinking, put on your critical thinking cap and just be more, you know, open minded, I would say, during. Great. Thanks. Ha ha. <laughs> and then it doesn't you're done. end at the MBA, it's just the beginning. <laughs> exactly. And then you're done, but you're not actually done, right? Obviously, you know, you have your classes and then, of course, you have your thesis, you have your perfect professional experience. Um, but throughout, I would say even during and after, you want to communicate about your success. You know, sometimes we we publish um, articles or homework that the professors have asked us to do, and it 
it's it allows you to create a voice and a presence and um, to certify yourself a little bit more as an expert, as a, a thinker. Uh, so you want to communicate about your success. We went to this company. We met some amazing people. Communicate about it. Um, when you're finished with your MBA, um, talk about the things that you've accomplished during the MBA. What did you do during a live business case? What was your role? Why was it engaging? Why was it inspiring? Um, so you have to create a persona, I would say. It's really about that storytelling. So that's absolutely key, I would say, during and after. And of course, you need to uh, think about leveraging the network that we have. We have 47,000 uh, people in our network uh, at GEM around the world, not just in France, but really around the world. And I would say half of our MBA uh, stayed in France initially after graduation, and some of them, of course, have moved on from there. And the other parts are around the world. And so we have 2,300 alumni, I think, around the world that are MBA specific. Uh, over the past 20 years, we've had 20 years of this program. So absolutely, uh, we have connections around the world in various industries. And obviously, after Virginie uh, helps you to learn how to reach out correctly and navigate, <laughs> which is key. Again, don't knock on the door and say, hi, I need a job. Um, but, you know, she teaches you how to network with these people and how to reach out. Um, so now you have that know-how, and now it's time to create your network. Again, soft contact in the beginning um, so that afterwards you have something solid. So just you need to just keep, as I say, connecting, engaging, learning, and also paying it forward. Because when you're talking about networking, it's about paying it forward, like Ishita's doing right now. So thank you so much, Ishita. You know? And then maybe somebody says, oh, my gosh, I saw you on that, and I'd love to give you a job and something else I would love to talk to you about. And again, we create these amazing connections. So don't hesitate to, to continue paying it forward. I'm going to add to one of my favorite things about the MBA alumni network is um, that they're a little bit, they start to become more advanced in their careers, right? And then you mm -hmm. think anywhere between age 30 to you know, oh, yeah. retirement, yeah. right? Yeah. And, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, and at this point, like they're just so willing and excited to to share their knowledge and to give back and to contribute to the community and they're more stable in their lives and they're at this different place in which they're really engaged and enthusiastic. And so we're very fortunate to have such a wide range of uh, people from every industry and, and nationality imaginable um, that are really involved and excited about to share. Yeah, because mm -hmm. actually we, of course, we have a full-time program here in Grenoble, but actually we have run programs in Berlin, in London, in Moldova, Malta, Russia, so Moscow, uh, et cetera. So a lot of, and even Colombia in, in uh, uh, Medellin, uh, et cetera. So we've, we've launched programs around the world. And so we have a strong network around the world of people who are absolutely, you know, based in those, in those countries. So having such a rich network means we have professionals of various ages and various career stages um, who are out there. So thanks for bringing that up, Jenny. Thanks. And they're also sharing job opportunities. They're yes, really that's true. Right yeah. Paying it Very forward right again, paying yes, it absolutely. forward. They contact us and they say, oh, do you have any of those amazing MBAs yeah. like I was <laughs> 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 who could, you know, come out and help? So, absolutely. absolutely, especially because we've created strong bonds with them, strong links. Uh, I've been coaching the MBAs for the past six years. So the ones who I've been working with uh, know me well. And so they contact me regularly to, like, to offer their help, uh, offer job opportunities. And I'm also, uh, it's also easy for me to connect our current MBAs with our past MBAs because I know them quite well. Thank you. Um, and maybe Virginie, you would share a little bit about the, this, share this slide a little bit of what of the, the MBA profile, perhaps. Yeah, so these are uh, statistics from our 2023 MBA graduates. This is where uh, they're working in terms of functions and sectors. Uh, we only selected like the top five. Uh, obviously, the top one is general management, um, so probably um, the reason why um, our students want to do an MBA to have like a more general, um, like strategic position and uh, managerial position. Uh, second top function is product management, then sales, uh, then management consulting, logistics and supply chain in terms of functions. In terms of sectors, it 
really um, there is um, like uh, over the years. Uh, it also depends on how dynamic the market is for a specific uh, type of sector. Uh, for our 2023 graduates, uh, the top sectors were like quite equally automotive and aerospace, consulting, industry manufacturing, and IT operations and services. And uh, number five was the energy sector. All right, so we'll just kind of wrap this up and try to get to your questions here. So what we I think we could say is that you should engage early and often with our with our fabulous career center um, for a successful tr uh, career transition to stay proactive, take advantage of every resource and follow up on career leads consistently. So where you can find out more, of course, our website. And I want to mention our strategic international recruitment officers all over the world. Um, of course, Chandra and I are happy to answer any questions you may have as well. But if you um, have more questions specifically linked to uh, your region, and they're here to help you with your application process and answer any questions about the program. Uh, so you'll find their information also on the MBA page, and they, they're more than happy to reach out or to discuss with you as well. Uh, the MBA and help you with some of those more specific questions about what it is like to relocate. But again, we're here to answer anything you, any questions. And thank you very much. So with that, I'm going to stop my slides. I see we have a couple questions here, so we're happy to answer that. Um, and then we'll see if there's anything else we might have missed here. So first question. As someone passionate about leadership development, particularly for women in management, I like this person already, <laughs> I'm interested to know if the GEM MBA offers any internal mentoring programs or initiatives specifically aimed at supporting female leaders, either with the student body or through alumni networks. That's an excellent question, actually. So we, we did have it for a while. I'm, I've been the director for the program for two years now, but that means uh, um, coming in and this is really my first year where I'm putting some major uh, actions in place, including uh, the alumni network, um, for example, doing uh, workshops remotely and doing continuing education, things like that. But one of the things that I'm really interested in is the mentoring program. Um, I think to put something in that's a little bit more official than simply reaching out because of course, you know, we do have a rich group and we of course can reach out um, uh, and find people who happen to be in the industry. So I would like to put something in place by the time you get here in 2025. So that's one of my goals for 2025. Um, however, what's important also is to think about the mix of male and female in your program this is also something very important when you're thinking about leadership and women in leadership, because people have a tendency, especially um, women, and I'm stereotyping, of course, but this is just the studies prove, uh, that when women are in a situation where uh, the MBA happens to be very male heavy, women will take a back seat and will not take as much initiative. So being in a classroom that is a lot more 50-50, and actually we've been 50-50 for two or three years, um, it is very empowering because the balance uh, of female and male in the classroom is actually quite leveling of the field. So that's, that's quite important um, to make sure that you're in uh, a room that you're very comfortable with, that there's no power domination where you have these CEOs, uh, males, or you know, high-level um, executive males who are, are coming in and and you don't feel perhaps equal because there may be mansplaining or whatever. And in this situation, it really does create a very cohesive, well-balanced group um, and equal participation. And so I think this is, um, this is one of the positive things. In fact, in the FT rankings that we just, um, that we just did, the male-female ratio is actually quite important. And in our part-time program in Georgia, it's actually 66% female. So we're talking power women. It's amazing. Um, you know, with, um, uh, you know, they, a lot of them are mothers in powerful positions. And um, it's two-thirds female at the moment and one-third male, which is very interesting. So the answer 
Short answer, absolutely for 2025. Long answer, consider the balance of um, and the ratio of male to female. I think that's very important. We happen to be in a tech area, so you would think it would be much more male dominated, but we also have the the sustainability, which usually attracts a female um, population as well. So in the end, it's it's quite balanced. I'd like to say that I think this creates a better learning environment for everybody because yeah. you're probably thinking of coming, you know, abroad. Some of you are coming from um, outside of France. Mm -hmm. um, so being in a gender balanced, multicultural, international environment really does prepare you um, to challenge you, to help you think in a completely different way and prepares you for an international career, which is why you're probably looking at doing an MBA. And by international career, that means working outside of your comfort zone in different environments and managing those situations, right? Uh, so becoming a manager in these complex working environments. And so you get exposed to that by studying abroad, which is why it makes it quite different than studying an MBA at home. And that's that really what you get. So it's not men also learn to become managers in complex, you know, multicultural gender balanced environments. Yeah. And that's really important. I think uh, an important attribute of our MBA. Yeah, I think the, the nice thing is that everyone feels unique because everyone feels like they, there's no imbalance. There's no heavily one thing or another. And so everyone feels unique, but in an equal way, which is nice because mm -hmm. everyone brings something nice to the to the room. And the first thing everyone said was, let's make a dinner party and everyone can bring something special from their from their culture. And and so this is the, the cohesion that we want to create in the beginning. Thank you. All right, so another question. I have a background in leading large-scale transformation projects related to data and managing cross-functional teams and industries, such as energy and automation. That's why I'm particularly interested in how the GEM MBA can further enhance my leadership skills and strategic thinking. Could you explain and give a concrete example of how the program supports professionals like myself in advancing to not just managerial roles, but executive roles and navigating complex global business environments? It's an excellent question. Yeah, it is, it is. I mean, obviously um, this is on EMBA, this is an MBA that we're talking about today. We do have an EMBA coming up in, uh, in a part-time focus usually, uh, because we're going to be focusing on people uh, around the area here. But the, it's true that the EMBA would be more focused on um, strategy and uh, leadership in a general sense. However, I do think that those uh, aspects are incredibly important. And it really depends on, on learning a little bit more about what you were doing in the past. But I think that your, I would say your resume, your CV speaks for itself. Your experience speaks for itself. Um, and I don't know if you had a bachelor's in business or another master's or exactly what and how this will um, add to um, that knowledge base. Uh, what's going to be interesting is that you'll probably be challenged by either, like I say, other subjects, other modules, or other people that are in your program um, that have varying experience already managing being in this intensive program for 10 months is already something, like I say, that challenges your intercultural, your leadership um, role. And you are allowed, uh, for example, if you wanted to take a, a leadership role within the program, we have what's called the class representative, who is the liaison in between the group and, um, and myself as the director or the coordinator or the teachers, et cetera. So uh, this is always uh, an interesting extra role. We also do the consulting projects. So it depends on how you're going to, um, how would I say, adopt um, a posture. So your posture, you have the ability to take on a specific posture um, because we give you all of the different tools. And after, for example, understanding how to be, for example, a servant leader or how to be a leader, not as the manager, but as a leader, the inspiration, the one who helps, uh, the one who people would identify as a leader. Um, is important. And so learning to a little bit more about personal development and about how you can, um, I would say, create a stronger profile as a leader uh, could be part of that. As an example, like I say, we do the, Virginia mentioned the process communication module um, or model that we do uh, with the debriefing is really understanding um, 
how I can interact with the others, how I can be a better communicator, how I can give other people what they need, how I can instill a better um, working cohesion. Um, so those things I think are, are important and pretty concrete. But like I say, the, the, we would say live business case, but it's the consultancy um, project is very important. So you can take a role in, in that situation. And there are projects that we put people on throughout the year where you could take a more important role. Um, so it, again, I, I don't know where you're coming from. I would just say that you can be pushed and push yourself so to get to the level that you want to be. Okay, and thank you. And since we're coming up to the hour, I would like to maybe ask our two other guests if they have another last piece of advice that they'd like to share. Yeah. If she said uh, you. Oh. Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, just to add on the point also, which Chandra already told that uh, uh, it's more about uh, uh, what you go through during the uh, process. Uh, for example, you work with different teams, uh, you work on the case studies, uh, uh, you have uh, 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 like when you work in a working group with uh, people from different organizations coming from different uh, nationality, they have a different way of thinking. And when you work together in, in the group, uh, you and, and in some case study during your course, different courses on different topics, uh, it creates, uh, you know, uh, more uh, uh, by the end of the uh, MBA, you will tackle all kind of um, different topics uh, uh, and uh, your uh, thinking, I think uh, the out of the box thinking, uh, because currently you're working in more uh, in the, uh, what you say, uh, singular pillar. And uh, when you work together in a uh, more uh, heterogeneous groups, uh, your way of thinking is more aligned to a global uh, overview on the macro topics, uh, not to consider yourself uh, like prohibited in what you actually are doing currently right now. So, uh, and also at the end of, uh, uh, you have lots of, uh, what do you say, case studies during your, um, uh, in, like interviews and stuff. You will find, uh, 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 like uh, companies, you will, uh, they will give you some case studies uh, on which you have to, uh, uh, through various stages of uh, the rounds, which you have to go through. So uh, most of the people like us, they, we have received one case study and how you will approach those cases you have to present on them uh, so uh, during the, uh, that time it will by the end of your uh, studies you will you will be able to uh, present it more clearly and uh, that's where all your uh, you know education and all your experiences uh, uh, in your MBA it will help you out yeah and I would I would say definitely you know the as far as strategic thinking, I think it's also systemic thinking because strategy in this at this level, you need to, you know, whatever your experience was in the transitions, it's also important to understand and speak the language of the variety of different business units uh, in your company. And the fact that you've gone through these different modules, you get a very good broad overview of the stakeholders, their needs, um, any kind of blocking points, um, uh, strategy that in obviously uh, incorporates all of the current challenges as you were talking about, you know, um, either it could be data, it could be um, organizational, it could be uh, sustainable, et cetera. But being able to have a systemic view and think about all of the different factors, you put it all together as if she was saying, either through a, a challenge or a simulation or through several live business cases that we do with various companies. So it might push you out of your comfort zone because perhaps it, it's not going to be exactly like uh, the companies that you're working with. Maybe they're going to be with a startup. Maybe you're going to help a startup. Maybe you're going to help a smaller company, or maybe you're going to be working in a different sector, a different industry, or a different focus. Maybe it's going to be about uh, a product. Um, so I think the different challenges and having the, the wide base to have the systemic view is concretely what's going to help you with that strategic thinking. So getting yourself out of the out of the box and putting yourself into a new challenge. Thank you. So we have a couple quick questions and then I'd like to let Virginie give us one big tip. So I'll give her a second to think about it while I answer these other questions to think about what is the question she gets asked the most and we can all learn from her right now. It's be very useful. So while she's thinking about her answer there, um, one, I'll read these couple questions here it says, okay, um, 
wants to know uh, on one of the slides depicted if the international studies shows the, the study trips involved. So yes. if there are any costs, Chandra, that's a nice one to answer. That's absolutely a really good question that you should be asking schools because uh, there are hidden mm -hmm. costs and you really need to uh, thank you for asking that. Um, I mean, I would say our value proposition is quite unique um, because when you were, for example, when we're going to Berlin, we cover your transportation, we cover your hotel, we cover several of the meals when we're there. So we're not going to, we want to make sure that whoever's signed on to our program is able to do the program correctly. That means it's not going to be a hidden cost. Um, so we do include the trip this year, we're going to Berlin, again, like I said, uh, so that includes the flight, the transportation to and from transfers, and the hotel, I think we're staying at a, at a Hilton um, uh, together, and we have individual rooms. So if you take that into consideration with the fees that you're paying, <laughs> it's actually quite a deal. Um, so we have that as one trip. The other trip is, of course, your specialization. Sorry, this is sustainability, and I have, <laughs> I have to do the dance to be able to have light, I guess. Um, sorry. Uh, we are a um, Société à Mission, which is like a B Corp. So we do talk about sustainability and we are focused on sustainability. So I apologize for the lights. Um, but the other trip that uh, I was going to mention is the specializations. Uh, in general, they are based here in Grenoble. And we do also corporate expedition where we do a full week uh, where we go out to visit companies and we take you on a tour bus. And so everything is included. And when we do our specializations here in Grenoble, um, there's no extra cost for those who decide, for example, to go to Paris. Um, people usually stay in like an Airbnb together and share costs. The train ride from here to there, if you get the tickets early, you know, it's probably a hundred euro round trip. So it's not going to make or break. Um, but it is something to consider. So it is something that people do consider um, when they're choosing their specializations, which is what they're doing this week for, for my current year one. So it's quite exciting. Anyway, good question. Great, Thank great. you. That, yeah, so it, it is really nice. So the other question is about funding from Campus France, and that is also a good question, and it really varies from where you come from. And so in your case, um, coming from Africa, I'm going to suggest reaching out to, again, our international um, recruitment officer, because she, she'll she have all the right contacts for you, and she'll be able to advise you on this. So she's very well networked with Campus France. Um, but just shoot us a message and, and we could find those answers for you either through through her or from our admissions team. So those those are all. Um, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> my webcam is getting tired. Yes, yeah, sorry. Maybe so, like yeah, but we have quite a yeah. So every everybody, each one of you are coming with your own unique situations. And um, but that's a very good question as well. So shoot us an email and, and we'll put you in touch with the right people to help you with that. Oh, did you see the last question? I really wanted to ask. Uh, yes. One. Okay. So last sure. question, and then we will let Virginie give us her, her amazing advice. Just the summary so, really quick was uh, um, mm -hmm. about online programs because the, the teachers are from everywhere. No, we fly them in or they are here in Grenoble because our professor base is international. I personally don't believe in, um, for example, 100% online program hybrids. Okay, if you're doing a part-time program, which means you go to the campus every other module, something like that, okay. But networking is so important and being in the classroom is so important. It's very difficult to maintain your engagement where you're connected to a screen. Obviously, we've been together for an hour. I hope it's been engaging, but the idea of doing that for six hours or eight hours at a time, absolutely not. We do not deliver our program online. You have to be in class. You have to be on campus for our full-time program. Our part-time program is going to be flexible, which means part of the program will be online, part of it will be face-to-face -face, um, because people will be continuing their jobs wherever they are, probably in Europe and France. So it allows a little bit of flexibility, but I pick and choose which classes will be online for the part-time program. But absolutely full-time program, 100%, aside from, you know, strange things that could happen. And but. our international faculty are based here in Grenoble. So exactly. I think we said earlier, Grenoble is the second English is the what, the second most English spoken speaking city in oh, the France. I said that wrong. Country. Clearly my English is struggling. Second now, Anglophone you know. city in France. Yeah, that's it. It's incredibly that's it. So international. It's very international. And you can see Chandra and I being American and living in France as well. So 
very international city. All right, Virginie. Yeah, so uh, first maybe a, a very quick recap of uh, what I recommend to do first, like being proactive, anticipating, uh, if you have mentioned, uh, thinking of uh, your career objective early on, um, identifying your values, really important to anticipate. Uh, planning, we discussed about planning. Uh, this is critical. Uh, we can really see the difference between our students who are like really planning their uh, uh, actions throughout the year, uh, dedicating times and meeting regularly with me uh, compared to the students who are that just like last minute deciding uh, to uh, consider uh, starting looking for a job. Uh, so planning, anticipating, really important. And the key word I keep repeating to our students is networking. Uh, the network starts in the classroom. Uh, you have a variety of backgrounds, people coming from different industries, different roles. Start with that, they have their own network. Uh, really, really encourage our students to capitalize on the very close network they have already at hand in the classroom. Um, also, like um, uh, Chandra mentioned this, but uh, uh, creating um, opportunities to discuss with people, uh, have your pitch ready uh, and uh, have these informal conversations, give to receive uh, in a like networking situation. I mean, connection, connecting with a person, giving to receive is very important. Ipshita also mentioned that as well. Um, really, really important. This makes a massive difference and you never know who you're talking to. Uh, so always be prepared to pitch yourself. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, Ipshita, for joining us. Thank and you, thank Ipshita. you, Virginie, for sharing your expertise. And again, if anyone has any other questions, we're all please drop us an email. You'll go find our contact information on the website. And we'll be very happy to talk to you about your individual questions or put you in touch with, with someone who can answer. So thank you. And with that, I'll um, have a good evening or a good day wherever you are in the world. So thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.